So, games aren't fun anymore. If you're the sort of person that gets recommended my channel, you probably feel something like that, or at least you've spoken to other people or watched videos by creators who are expressing that opinion. I think a lot of these videos are very intelligently made, and they go through a lot of very good reasons why games aren't fun anymore. But I think I can break them down generally into three major categories. One, AAA game devs have ruined everything for all of us with their disgusting level of greed, particularly game developers like Ubisoft and Activision. Number two, games are based off a dopamine response, and dopamine responses only work for the expectation of pleasure. And overall, the more you play games, the less you'll enjoy them. So by the time you reach proper middle age, you're just kind of dopamined out on shooting someone in the face in Counter-Strike. And finally, number three, you got old. You have kids, a wife, a job, a partner, who knows, but you have real things that carry more importance than gaming, and you just can't put the time into it to really enjoy it. Now, people have provided more reasons than that, but I think this is a good general summary of the kinds of problems people are facing. Now, in a past life, I used to be a philosopher of moral psychology, and my thesis was on human happiness and how the good things in our lives factor into actually making us happy. So obviously, this got me thinking. Now, let me swap back into underpaid university lecturer mode and ask you a question. There's a man, let's call him Steve. And Steve is very well off. He has a high paying job and a loving wife and two children. And he's living that iconic American white picket fence lifestyle. Until one day as he approaches, say, middle age, he finds out that his children actually hate him and his wife is cheating on him. And his wife leaves him and his kids leave him. And Steve reflects back and asks himself, was I really happy all those years of supposed success? Now, this question is often used by psychologists and philosophers because you get two very different answers from two very different sets of people. Stay with me here. I will get back around to why games aren't fun anymore. People that have done a lot of studying in the fields of psychology and philosophy and related sciences will almost always respond that Steve wasn't happy while people that have never studied those subjects will say that Steve was happy, at least while he felt happy. And now if you're a fan of pop philosophy and psychology or you read self-help books, you'll probably, or maybe just clever, you'll notice that this is the difference between an objective conception of happiness, where happiness is a fact about a person's life, and a subjective conception of happiness, where happiness is about how a person feels about their life. If you want to, Leave your answers to that thought experiment in the comments below and like and subscribe. I'm almost getting to the point where this channel might be able to buy me a cup of coffee. Well, to settle that question, we're going to have to talk a little bit about what games are. What do they contribute to our happiness? Why do we like playing them? Why do we say this game is making me miserable? League of Legends is toxic. Overwatch has broken my heart. What is it about games that we relate to them in that way? And the way most philosophers or psychologists might describe this is that they are goods in relation to our happiness. They are things that, at least we hope, are making our lives better by engaging with them rather than worse. And when they fail to do so, our response is, well, anger, frustration, and sadness. That's sort of how goods are. But then we come to the question, what makes a good a good in your life? How did League of Legends go from something that you really, really enjoyed playing with your buddies when you were 12 to something that you're now playing late into the night after work, causing you problems with your sleep while you rage at the monitor? Well, the answer I want to give is that it's the place the good has in your life. It's not that games got bad or got good. I'm accused of nostalgizing a lot on this channel. But I, I don't think that games got bad. I mean, ignoring Blizz Activision. Anyways, back to the point. The point is that what makes a game good for you is the role that that game can take 
in your life as you live it. And this, I think, especially for those of us that are getting dangerously into middle age, is something that we need to think about. And you might think, hey, this is just a really sad video. Old Man Manager, you're basically telling me that no matter what I do, I can never enjoy the games I used to enjoy. And the reality is I think that that might be true. But on the other hand, I think there are some positives to this, which is that you can begin to look at gaming in a new light. You can contextualize it differently and let gaming play a different role in your life. I want to be clear here, though. If you're feeling not so hot about gaming because you get together with your buddies and you're playing Counter-Strike like you always used to, but you're just not feeling it and you're just getting random bouts of anger and you're not at all happy, you need to contact a medical professional and seek help for depression because that's a just really common sign of depression and nothing I say in this video is going to help you. That sort of thing is not going to be solved by the solution that I'm going to go into now. With that prefaced, I'm going to go into five games that I think you should think about if you're a dangerously middle-aged person that's now considering new games to play or how to make gaming fun again for themselves. The first thing I would recommend is if you're the sort of person like me who never really played fighting games before, pick up fighting games. Street Fighter VI and Guilty Gear Strive are two of the most fun and accessible fighting game titles out there at the moment. And if you're getting to around my age and you've never played a fighting game before, it's going to be frustrating and horrible. But guess what? You don't need to play it all that much. You can put in 10 minutes of practice after work and maybe put in one or two matches. But you'll see progression and growth. You won't have to sacrifice huge amounts of time trying to play World of Warcraft or Elder Scrolls Online. You can see that growth and you begin to make friends in the game and in that community. You'll begin to discover creators for them on YouTube. You'll begin to relate to something that you didn't relate to before and that'll feel different and new. As you progress through the game, you'll also get a sense of accomplishment of adding something new to your skill set rather than trying to recapture something from your past. And as far as fighting games are concerned, there's never been a better time. If you don't want to spend any money at all, Fightcade is a free program that you can download and play online. Uh, if you decide to do that, uh, uh, mention it in the comments below and I'll add you. Yeah, you'll get your butt kicked a lot, but you'll gain new skills and have some fun and meet some new people. Number two, and I'm going to try and not put this in a sexist way, but play girl or weeb games. If you're a sort of straight white male that generally plays the sort of games that straight white males play, try out something like Persona 5, Persona 4, or Persona 3. Try playing a JRPG if you've never really played a JRPG before and always gave up at the start. Or play something like Stardew Valley, Harvest Moon. Delve into a genre of games that you've never played before and don't have any preformed expectations about, and just enjoy the ride. Avoid games like Path of Exile, although I love it, and Diablo 4, although I hate it, that require you to think about min-maxing. When you're young, it's really fun to min-max because our brains are developing and we're trying to figure out the best way to achieve the things that we want in our lives. And as our brains develop and grow, we gain satisfaction because each time we learn to min-max better and better, we feel better and better. But once we get old, min-maxing is what we do for our damn jobs. You don't want to be playing min-maxing games even though you think you do. Doesn't mean you have to stop entirely, but your brain probably just needs a break from trying to find the best solution to every problem. So go and play a game like No Man's Sky that doesn't really care whether you min-max. Go and play old NES games that are just sort of mindless reaction-based stuff. Or one of my favorites when I really want to switch off Grab a beer, boot up some old Doom wads. For those of you that are most of the age range of this channel, a Doom wad is a modification for, for Doom. Check out Doom. Doom has some amazing mods. But play something a little bit more mindless and allow yourself to just view gaming as something chill, not something you're achieving. And number five, and probably the most important, do your best to reconnect with friends. 
in this age, it's really possible to play things like 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons online reasonably efficiently. You'll meet new people. There are multiple websites, if you just do a bit of Googling around, that can set you up with people to play online, and you'll probably have a great time. You can play anything from Call of Cthulhu to Vampire Masquerade, if that's your thing, and uh, Dungeons and Dragons, as I already mentioned. But more than that, maybe reconnect with some friends you haven't played games with in a long time, because the social factor of gaming has been lost year on year on year due to the increase in things like effective matchmaking services. And also, if you're in my age range, most of your friends disappeared from that Steam list of yours about the time they had their second or third kid, and they probably come on for about 10 minutes in the evening. The reality is that if games aren't fun for you anymore, and you're not suffering from a medical condition like depression, you probably just need to change your relationship to them, whether that means getting new friends, or playing a new game, or maybe even looking at the game you currently play in a really different way. That's probably going to be the answer that changes gaming from something negative in your life back to something positive. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe because, uh, I mean, I'd like to get this channel to the point where I can buy coffee from it. That'll be the coffee or beer. That'll, 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 that's the real achievement point. Anyways. Peace.